Hey guys, Pastor Scott here. I uh, just wanted to introduce this video um, of the sermon that I preached yesterday, February 3rd at uh, Bassett Creek Baptist Church. Uh, it's entitled A Fresh Anointing and it's found in the book of Luke chapter 19. It's about Zacchaeus, so I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and have a blessed day. If you found your place in Luke chapter 19, say amen. amen. And if you're able, I ask that you stand as we honor the reading of God's holy word. I'll be reading from the NIV, and you follow along in the translation that you're comfortable with. Beginning with verse number 1, chapter 19, the Gospel of Luke. The Bible says, And Jesus entered Jer Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed into a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said unto him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Would you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, as we pause this morning to thank you, Thank you for your living word. We are so thankful that it is still inerrant and infallible and sharper than a double-edged sword. And Father, I pray that that sword will begin to convict the hearts of those who are in attendance this morning. Lord, that you would open our minds and our hearts and give us the ability to understand and retain this message. And Father, as my prayer is each and every time I stand behind this pulpit, Lord, that you would just uh, allow me to decrease as you increase. Father, I, I pray that not my will, but thy will be done. And if there be any here within the sound of my voice that's never accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior and committed their lives to you, Father, I pray that today could be the day of their salvation. Father, I pray that you have your will and your way throughout this message, and we'll give you the praise. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to preach a message this morning that I've simply entitled, A Fresh Anointing. I heard the story about a, a man who was going for his physical, his checkup. And he gets into the office and the doctor says, well, how tall are you? He said, I'm about six feet tall. So she, she gets the measuring stick out and, and she puts it up there. She says, sir, you're, you're actually five nine. She said, how much do you weigh? He said, I weigh about 150. So, okay, let's get on the scales. And after he got on the scales, she said, sir, you're actually 166. So then she said, sir, can you tell me what your normal blood pressure is? He said, my normal blood pressure? How do you expect my blood, blood pressure to be normal? I came in here tall and slender, and you made me short and fat. <laughs> I thought about that when I thought about Zacchaeus. Now, if I was to start this little ditty, I think almost everybody could finish it. Zacchaeus was a... We little man, we Keep going. Little man was That's, we, we learned that in vacation Bible school. I, I can almost attribute every story from church, and this is sad. Young people, don't, don't take this to heart, but by a cute little girl. Because when I was in fourth grade, I went to vacation Bible school with Elizabeth Gunther. Never forget her. I always tell my wife, uh, at Christmas, she made me a cake in her Easy Bake Oven. And, that's how, and I remember this particular song. But I, I want us to, to, to allow the Bible to come to life this morning. I, I want us to allow it to be three-dimensional. I, I want us to look at Zacchaeus and to say, what was it about Jesus that made him want to climb up a sycamore tree? Think about it. You go to parades, Mardi Gras coming up, and you know, I'm, I'm not telling you to go or not to go. I, I know there's going to be thousands of people there. But you get the little people from behind and they, they can't see and they're doing all this and they're, they're jumping up and down. and they, they, you know, We try to put our kids in the front. I, I imagine Zachy is doing the very same thing, trying to see Jesus when he came by. But why? What was it about Jesus 
that Jesus that Zacchaeus wanted to see. Well, you know what? We, we don't know for sure. The Bible does not specifically tell us uh, or, or, or give us any details. So this morning, I, I want to take us on a journey. Uh, and I want to um, uh, go through Zacchaeus' tax collector route. And I want us to uh, imagine that we are part of the Hebrew revenue service as we go on this journey with Zacchaeus. We, we, we need to find out exactly what it is that Zacchaeus wanted to know and wanted to see about Jesus. You can thank my lovely wife for, for making this shirt. So now I'm going to be Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And I want us to go. That's what a tax collector would wear, right? I was going to put a picture of a devil up there, it could be a thing of the IRS, but I, I, I didn't want to offend anybody. But, but I want us to go on Zacchaeus' tax collector route, and I want us to see three encounters that I believe Zacchaeus might have had as he went door to door. So the first, first door that he knocks on, a woman comes to the door. And of course, he's there to do what? Collect taxes. So he says, ma'am, I'm here from, from the tax collection agency, and I, I want to collect your taxes. And she says, oh, Mr. Zacchaeus, I, I'm so sorry. I don't have the money today. You see, Mr. Zacchaeus, I, I, I've had this medical issue that's plagued me for 12 years. And I've been unable to work. I've seen doctor after doctor after doctor. I've, I've tried everything. I've spent all my money. But if you just give me 30 days and you come back, I will do my very best to pay you. So Zacchaeus, he pulls out his little pad. and I don't have a pencil, so we're going we're gonna to wing it. And he writes, woman with medical issues, 30 days. Okay, so he goes and he comes to the next house and he knocks on the door and in the next house, another lady answers the door, and he says, Ma'am, I'm Zacchaeus, and I'm here to collect your taxes. And she says, Oh, sir, I, I, I know that you have a job to do, and I, I know it's very hard, but you see, I have this son who's crippled, and he's been crippled for a very long time, and, and I'm the only one that can take care of him. You know, we rely on a little help from our friends, and, and, and we, we, we do our best, but we, we just don't have the money. We, we don't have the money. Can, can you come back in 30 days? So Zacchaeus gets out his little note taken and he writes down, lady with the son who was crippled, 30 days. So he goes to the next door. He knocks on it. And next you see a blind man who comes out with a stick and he comes to the door. and He says, my name is Zacchaeus and I'm here to collect your taxes. And the blind man says, well, sir, you can obviously see that I'm blind. I, I have some people who will take me to, the, to the, the, the courtyards, to the temple to beg. That's the only way I get money. That's the only way I can eat. That's the only way I can pay my rent. I, I don't have your taxes today. I, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe, maybe if you'll just give me 30 days. So Zacchaeus writes down, blind man, 30 days. And let's jump. Let's jump ahead. Let's jump ahead to these 30 days. And Zacchaeus goes back and he knocks on the first door. But instead of a woman who, who was downtrodden and, 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 and suffering and, and struggling to pay life, now a woman comes to the door happy and exuberant and, and excited. And she says, oh, Mr. Zacchaeus, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> I don't, I've never said that when the IRS has called me uh, April 15th. No. Mr. Zacchaeus, let me tell you what's happened. I, I, was, I, 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 was just, I was distraught. I didn't know what to do. I was you know, coming uh, here and there and trying to get all my, my medical attention. But then I heard about this man named Jesus. And I heard about he was healing people. And I heard about he was, he, he, he was raising people from the dead. And I heard he was coming near us. And I just thought if I could just touch the hem of his garment that I might be made well. And so when he came by, I, I snuck in through the crowd, Mr. Zacchaeus, and I, and I reached down and I, and I touched to, uh, the hem of his robe. And I felt the power flow through me. And immediately I knew I was healed. Amen. Mr. Zacchaeus, I, I've been able to work. And I have your taxes for you. Here they are. Zacchaeus would take his little notepad and he would write down, Woman encountered Jesus. Taxes paid in full. So he goes to the next door and he knocks on the next door. 
And another, uh, the, the house that he had been to before that a lady came, this time a young man came to the door. And Zacchaeus is kind of looking to the back and he's like, weren't you the one laying on the mat in the back? He said, I was, Mr. Zacchaeus. He said, but let me tell you what happened to you. We heard about this man named Jesus. And, and Jesus was healing people. And, and we heard he was going to be at this house. And my friends, four of my friends came and they, they picked me up, one on each corner of the mat. And, and, and they took me all the way. But we couldn't get in because there were so many people. So my homeboy Jimmy had this bright idea. Let's go up on the roof. And get a, get, get a jaws of life. And let's cut a hole in it. And we're going to let him down. And when he dropped me down in the middle, Jesus saw that, I, that all my friends had faith. And he said for me to pick up my mat and go home. For I was healed. And Zacchaeus still kind of mind blown at what's been happening. He took and wrote, crippled man, encounter with Jesus. Taxes. Paid in full. So Zacchaeus goes to the third door. He knocks on the door. And a man comes to it, the man he recognized before, but this time he didn't have his little walking stick. He didn't have his little Ray, 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 Ray Stevens, or what, what's his name? Oh, Ray Charles, his glasses on, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> and he, he, he came and he, he, he said, he said, aren't you the man that was blind? He, he said, yes, Mr. Zacchaeus, I was. He said, but let me tell you what happened because, you know, I was one of those who would beg and I was one of those who would, who would ask for crumbs and I, and I would ask for alms for the poor. He said, but then I heard about a man named Jesus who would come by and I'd heard so many stories. I just started screaming, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But my friends kept telling me to shut up. I said, Jesus ain't got time for you. And so that made me cry out all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then someone says, hey, it's your turn. Jesus said he'd see you. And when he came, when, when, when they brought me to Jesus, Jesus said, what is it you want me to do for you? And I said, Master, I want to see. And Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. And the man said, I immediately began to see. And guess what, Zacchaeus? I've been able to work for these last few weeks. And here, I've got your taxes, i got your back taxes, and i got a tip in there for you. And old Zacchaeus wrote down, blind man, encounter with Jesus, taxes paid in full. Zacchaeus, I wonder if he had maybe had some encounters like that, that had caused him to want to go up a sycamore tree in order to have an opportunity to see the Savior. I want, you know, and I, I'm just spitballing. It may have happened like this. It may not have happened like this. We just don't know. we got to fill in the blanks sometimes. I, I wonder if, if, if this fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit that Zacchaeus had seen just sweep through Jerusalem may be swept through himself and begin to have him to have a change of heart. The Bible says that when Jesus saw Zacchaeus up in the tree and said, come down, I must go to your house, he received him gladly. You know, tax collectors, I don't know if y'all know this, maybe the past pastors have, have broken it down, but tax collectors, the Jewish tax collectors, they paid what, what, what they considered a privilege to the Romans in order for them to collect taxes and, uh, and ultimately cheat their own people. That's why the Bible says that Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, whatever I have cheated, I will give back. Not just once, not just twice, not just thrice, but fourfold. He said, I'll give it back. I'll give it all back and more. A fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit swept through Zacchaeus and gave him a change of heart. Amen. Church, we need a fresh anointing. Amen. That was simply by way of introduction. I got three points this morning, three areas that I want us to look at where I believe that we need a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. The first one we're going to see, we need a fresh anointing in our own lives. We, I think we need to have our Zacchaeus moment. Amen? We, we, we need to have that moment where we recognize Jesus for who he is. And then we should want to, uh, that, that, that should cause us to, to stop at nothing to want to see the Savior. Stop at nothing to want to have an encounter with the Savior. It, it should make us want to climb a tree. Amen? I don't know about you. I can't climb a tree. But it should make us want to. 
It, it should make us want to dance a jig, well, what, whatever it takes. It, it, it should make us want to scale a mountain. It should make us want to run a marathon. It should make us want, like Superman, leap tall buildings in a single bound. Whatever it takes to have an encounter with the Savior if we want a fresh anointing in our lives. Amen. Folks, there are a lot of people who are struggling this morning. Emotionally, financially, personally. Depression. Addiction. There are people who are struggling. They need a fresh anointing. We need to be the ones to share with them the love of Jesus, to encourage them. We, we need to be the ones that, that, that tells them that you know, not, everything's just not going to be okay, but everything's going to be okay with Jesus. Everything's going to be okay when we have an encounter with the Savior. Wanting to meet with Him will make us do anything and everything, whatever it takes in order to see the Savior. How do you get a fresh anointing in your life? You have an encounter with the Savior. That's the first one. The second one we're going to see, we want to have a fresh anointing in our life. We need to have a fresh anointing in the lives of our families. Amen. We need it. This country needs it. The nucleus of the family uh, is, is deteriorating. It, it's sad. I mean, y'all see what's, what's going on in the country. Society tries to tell us that mom and dad, the, the mother, the father unit, e either one of them is not relevant. It, it's not needed. It's, it, it, you, can, you can do okay. I'm not saying you can't. For single mothers, single fathers, I was one. My wife was one. You know, but, but I think everything flows a little bit better when you have the nucleus of the family. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when you think about all the junk that's on TV nowadays, I miss the days of Ricky and Lucy Ricardo. <laughs> I miss the days of uh, John and uh, um, uh, Elizabeth Walton. I, I miss the days of Charles and Caroline Ingalls. I, I miss the days of Mike and Carol Brady. I even miss the days of Ward and June Cleaver. Amen? Amen. Now you say, Pastor, that, that's just television. It is just television, but do you know the average American adult watches five hours of TV a day? And I believe that the devil is using that to influence people. And we need to tell him to turn it off, tell him to get, because we need some positive influences in our life. Matter of fact, uh, sometimes when I get up in the morning, I'll watch um, Leave it to Beaver. Uh, between like 7 and 7.15 before I have to leave the school, me and Carol are watching it one day. And this is the honest truth. I'm not making this up. Uh, it was a scene in which uh, the father, Ward, was outside uh, doing a barbecue. And um, Wally comes out and says, Dad, how come when we cook outside, you do the cooking, but when we cook inside, Mom does the cooking? And look, go look it up. I'm not lying to you. He said these exact words. He said, well, son, that's because your mom's place is in the house. And if she's in the house, she might as well be in the kitchen. And I think my outside voice spoke. I was like, amen. <laughs> oh, that, that, that independent carrot, that didn't go over too well. But look, all, all that, 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 that silliness aside, look, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I, I miss when the family was portrayed as important. Now we have the train wreck known as the Kardashian family. Poor old, poor old Bruce. Now, now, Honey Boo Boo is a household name. <laughs> Right? Now we have, and this is sad because it's actually come to Mobile, drag queens reading to our children. Yes. But I think if we only had a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit sweep across our families, maybe, just maybe, our nation would be in a much better place spiritually than we are right now. Amen. Family. Is important. Every life matters. And it just breaks my heart. Being from Virginia, it breaks my heart to see what's happening in that state. It broke my heart to see what's happening in, in New York. And just when you think <coughs> that things couldn't get any worse, <coughs> you hear something and just say, oh my goodness, we've done reached another plateau. What is going on? You know what's going on. We, we need a resurgence of God in our society. You know, it, it's sad. I think we were talking about this in Sunday school. 
they, they, and I, again, I'm not trying to get political, but there are some who say that building a wall is immoral, and the same ones who say that are the ones who are applauding full-term abortions and, and, and even post-birth. That's not abortion. That's murder. Amen. I, I don't understand what, how they're sugarcoating it. But Sherry reminded us this morning that in the last days, evil will be called good <coughs> and good will be called evil. But folks, that should allow us, it, it should convict us to be on our knees more yes, in prayer for this lost country. A fresh anointing in our families, a fresh anointing in our lives, and we need a fresh anointing in our churches. And I don't say church as in Bassett Creek. Of course, we could always use it, but I'm talking about evangelical churches in general because it's sad what some of these churches are doing in order to try to get people to come in. But John, I want to close out with two stories that I believe will illustrate the need for a fresh anointing in our church. The first one was back in the 1600s. An architect by the name of Sir Char uh, Christopher Wren was building the St. Paul's Cathedral. And a reporter from the London Times wanted to um, chronicle that story. And so he went around to the different workers and the first one he asked him, he said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm putting this rock in this slot. He said, that, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> so, okay, he went to the next person. He said, what are you doing? Which, by the way, he was doing the exact same thing. The man said, I'm earning a day's living. So he went on to the third person who was doing the exact same thing in a different part of the church. And he said, so what is it that you're doing? What is your job? He said, I'm trying to help Sir Christopher build the St. Paul's Cathedral. Did you catch that? All three were doing the very same thing, yet they had a different perspective of what it was they were exactly doing. And I wonder sometimes if Christians really understand what we're doing to advance the kingdom here on earth. Because for some Christians, they're just going through sticking rocks in slots uh, just to kill time. Uh, others, I think, uh, they're kind of like, well, I just want to earn my reward so when I get to heaven, I have a better place to live in. It's sad because I wonder if we really understand what our goal is. It's not only to fulfill the Great Commission, which is going to the world and preach the gospel to all creation. It's about helping the Lord Jesus Christ finish the work that he started when he was here before. And I would venture to say that you would agree with me that we have some work to do. We're not done finishing the work he started until that trumpet sounds, until the dead in Christ rise. And, 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 you know, like I, I, look, I, I never was a big basketball person, but I've been practicing my jump for the rapture. You know, I'm gone. Because when that trumpet sounds, I'm out of here. You know, I'll be like, word to your mama, I'm gone. <laughs> but we're not done. The second story comes from Beth Moore. And I thought it was funny how that quote in our Sunday school book this morning, I said, man, Lord, I love it how you make it all go together. The second story was when Beth Moore and her husband was overseas in Angola. And they were trying to deal and, and, and um, just get a grip of the smells. If you've ever been to a foreign country, especially on mission, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's an eye-opener. And, and they were trying to absorb the sights and the smells of what they described as the living dead. And Beth Moore said, I learned something in one of those villages that will mark my teaching in response to the word of God. Because one of their guides said, one of their guides on the tour said that the most frustrating thing in this particular village was that when they received seed, seed, that rather than planting it and bringing forth the harvest, they would eat the seed. And Beth Moore said, I couldn't get over this statement. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Suddenly I had an answer to the question that I most often ask God. Why do some people see the results of the word and others don't? For example, why have many of us read books on forgiving people? We know what the teachings are. We know they're true. We know they're right. We've cried over them. We've highlighted them in our Bible. Yet we remain in our bitterness. Why? Because we ate the seed instead of sowing it. Think about that. We hear the word of God. We read it. We study it. But it has little effect because we don't apply it 
to our lives. If we want to reap a harvest and, and be the, the, the full potential that Christ wants us to be, then we have to have a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit going through us that will catapult us to want to go outside of our comfort zone, to, to go outside that box, to, to do things we wouldn't normally do. Why? Because we would have a passion to see lost souls saved. We must put into practice what we read about. We, we must put into practice uh, we, we must do what the Bible says. We must be obedient to God's word. And I believe this morning that if we want to have a fresh anointing uh, in our lives and in our families and in our uh, churches, that we just won't read what the word of God says. We'll live it out. Because the question is not, will God send it? The question is, are we ready to receive it? And if our hearts are not right, if they're not ready to cultivate all that in which God has wanted to teach us, then we're not going to be ready. We need to pray, uh, as the prophet said, when, when it said, who am I going to send? There's nobody here. And he says, here, my Lord, send me. Amen. We, we, we need to be the, the, the stands in the gap for our neighbor, stands in the gap for our co-worker, stands in the gap for our family member who may be lost and say, here I am, Lord. I am interceding for my brother, for my sister. We need to be the ones that God knows he can use in these last days in which we're living in. I don't believe God's done with us. Amen? Amen. I, I believe that God wants to pour out his spirit on us like he's never done before. And I be believe that he wants to use us. You know, we might think that, you know what, Pastor, I don't have the gift or I, I'm just unsure. I don't know how to do it. We may have all the excuses in the world, but God's got a plan. He has a purpose for each and every one of our life. And we have to step up and say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm willing and I'm able. Here I am. Use me and send me. If you're here this morning and you, you say, well, Pastor, I get it. I, I understand it. But I've never given my life to Christ. Or I, I've never, I, I've walked the aisle, but I've never followed through. Listen, I, my deacons, the, the, the leaders in this church, we want to disciple you. We, 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 I would love to take a young person under my wing and, and, and just uh, disciple them in their process. So I'm not saying that to put pressure or anything. I'm just saying if you feel led to grow deeper in your walk with the Lord, I ask myself, ask one of my deacons. We, we are here to help you. today new things every day depending on where I am in my walk where, where I what season I am in God speaks to me and I pray that you allow yourself to be used in such a way that you don't close up your heart and that you remain teachable so that God can still work through you and that God can still use you and he can still be a blessing in your life. And if you're here and you don't know him as Savior, don't leave here without knowing. Don't, don't leave here if there's a shadow of a doubt. Don't, don't leave here. I, 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 I'm going to be like Charles Spurgeon and, and D.L. Moody. I, I beg you, I implore you, don't leave here without knowing Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Because listen, I, I'm not going to tell you that it's all going to be hunky-dory. It's not going to be a bed of roses all the time. But I'm going to tell you what. The Bible said that Jesus came so we can have life and have it abundantly. And the abundant life we live, even when we're in the trials, we even in the valleys, is better than any life that we'll live unsaved. Amen. Because by the time you are taken from here and stand before God, what, what, did, what did Sherry say this morning in Sunday school? Nobody is ever on their deathbed said, oh man, I wish I would have lived for the devil more. I, I wish I would have, uh, you know, gone to more clubs. You know, I wish I would have done all this other stuff. No. It's the opposite. You get somebody on the deathbed who, who confesses Christ as Savior, they say, man, I wish I would have lived this life longer. I, I wish I would have uh, spent more years serving. I wish I would have not been so selfish. But after that, it's too late. So don't leave here during this time of invitation without knowing where it is that you'll go.
And then maybe one day you'll hear those, sir, those words, well done, my good and faithful servant, instead of those words, depart from me, for I knew you not. Would you pray with me?